to you this is if I was a adult I'd be saying bar humbug or something of the likes but my inner child is absolutely loving this welcome back to Big Dan's air gun review channel today we're going to be taking a look at the Rainson Edge X we had a little look at this a while ago we have one of the prototype rifles in we were testing and now we have the production version in front of us so it's only fair now we put it through its paces and see just what the rifle is capable of now as always we're going to be going over the rifle's features, handling, we're going to do shot count, overall consistency through the chrono and most importantly we're going to be setting some targets up at 25 yards and 45 yards to see what the rifle can really do. So with that said let's move on and see just what you get with your Edge X. Okay so features what do you get with your Edge X? Well as always we start off at the rear of the rifle. You can see you get an adjustable butt pad there, which is adjustable for length of pull. You also get an adjustable cheek piece, which is a nice little feature on a ballpup or semi ballpup style rifle. You've got your manual safety, you can see there. We'll talk a bit more about that in the handling section. And as you can see, this is also a side lever rifle. As we come up a bit, you can see the scope rails on here. These are your sort of standard Picatinny weaverish sort of style rail. So your dovetail mounts won't fit on this. As you come slightly further down, you have got a rather nice thumbhole stock. And the bit that I really like is that the grip is actually rubberized. It's not just plastic. So that's really quite a nice little, um, little creature comfort they've thrown on there. You have a match type two stage adjustable trigger. We'll talk a bit more about that later on. And as we come up a bit, you can see you have two pressure gauges. Now the one on the front is your air pressure gauge. The one on the rear is your regulator pressure gauge. You can see at the minute she's running at about 110-ish bar. So maybe a smidge higher for our power levels over here, but compared to some of the other guns on the market where they're running about 150 bar, like some of the Chinese stuff, that's actually pretty good. As we come up, you can see you've got more accessory rails either side of the rifle there, one on each side, if we just pan that through there so you can see. And you've got a really nice marine finished barrel. Now that wasn't on the prototype rifle we had, so I'm quite glad to see that there. As we come along, we have a rather monstrous looking bottle. I'm not entirely sure on the size at the minute, but I'll put that in the um, subtitles down below. And you've got a barrel shroud with half inch UNF thread on the end there. That's not all, however, you also get, as we come back, a couple of little interesting bits. You've got studs that can be switched from right to left hand side for if you want to fit a sling or anything like that. And on the front end, you also get a bipod rail or accessory rail on there. The rail also has three different places. If you can see that, apologies if you can't, we can actually put it, which is a nice little uh, extra feature, shall we say. One thing I'm not the hugest fan of is it does come with the pesky built-in filler probe, which usually is a great idea. But with this one, sadly, it is still the wrong size for pretty much every single whip in the UK I've ever seen. So you're given that brass adapter that you have to put on there so as you can fill your gun which of course is threaded. So it's not a quick fill adapter. It's in fact a long fill adapter because you need a threaded adapter to use the quick fill adapter. <sighs> That's that out the way and done with. As we come down a bit, you also get three magazines of standard, which is nice, a single shot tray and a silencer that can only be described as massive. Some guns give you silencers, Rainson give you a silencer that's currently suffering from elephantitis, it would seem. But either way, it's nice that you get one and we'll see how good that is a bit later on. So that's it for features on the Rainson Edge X. Let's put a scope on there now and see how she handles. But first, let's take a look at those mags. Okay, so loading the mags, how is that done? Well, thankfully, if you've seen our Kral videos, Reximex videos and such like that, it's really quite simple and you already know how to do this, so you can skip on ahead. Okay then, so the mag, all you need to do is spin this plate all the way around like so, and then use your index finger and thumb just to pinch it like that, and put your middle finger around the back just to cover the pellet hole just there like so. Apologies if I fluff this slightly, I'm using gloves and on top of that I'm obviously looking through a camera. Right, plop that one through there. That will lock the rotor inside the mag in place. And then after that, you simply plop one in straight through the top like so, until you're done. And that is that, your rain some mags all loaded up and ready to rock and roll. So that's mag loading out the way. Let's put the rifle to the shoulder and see what we think. Okay then, so handling, what do we think of the Rainson Edge X? You can probably tell I was slightly smiling already when the camera was coming on, that's because I've just fitted the, the humongous silencer on the end. I can say off camera, with the silencer on, 
It's got a little bit, a little bit more heft to it. You can feel it does put the weight slightly further forward on the rifle. It's not too bad though. It's not like you're swinging around a sledgehammer. Genuinely, you could pretty much walk around with it all day long, and it's not really going to make a huge amount of difference. But you can definitely feel something is there. <laughs> I'll put it to you like that. It's no carbon fiber. It's not a wraith or anything like that. It's yeah. It's you got a big lump on the end. I'll tell you what, though, it's made well. I mean, bloody hell, you could almost you could knock nails in with that. Um, it's got the weight for it. But uh, but no, genuinely, it's uh, that's why I'm smiling. There's nothing else going on. It's just because look at it. But let's get back to the review. So handling, what do we think of the Rainson Edge X? Well, with the silencer on, like we said, it does shift the weight slightly further forwards. It's pretty much, if you can see where my leading hand is is now, so obviously the one on the four stock there, it's pretty much there. So it's come slightly forward. With the silencer off, it's pretty much straight in the trigger guard. So again, depending on how you like it, I mean, I'm actually used to shooting nose heavy spring guns and such like that. So this is actually fitting me like a glove. I know it's going to sound a little bit suspicious, but genuinely this feels more comfortable to me than what it did without it because it feels like a spring gun. Um, but yeah, it's actually quite a well-behaved gun despite how outlandish the thing looks. It's like a Star Wars laser rifle. Um, we'll see if it's any more accurate than what the Stormtroopers had a bit later on. But we know the shoot, the, the guy she's pulling the, 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 the trigger isn't, but never mind. Um, yeah, the handling of the gun is really nice. The other thing I like is the rubber grip. And the thing that was a concern for me originally, can you see there's a lip at the bottom of the grip here? Now, when I looked at that, I thought in the pictures, ooh, that looks, there's not a lot of room in there for your hand to go in on that grip. And I've got, I haven't got the, the smallest hands on the planet. I am very pleasantly surprised. That's actually really nice. I can feel it there, make no mistake. Bear in mind, obviously I'm wearing gloves as well, but I can feel it there, but it actually feels lovely. It's almost like I can, not squeeze my hand into it to hold the rifle more stable but it's incredibly comfortable which I didn't expect I thought that was going to be a problem so well done Rainson there what I will mention which is a bit of a negative is it is mainly a right-handed shooter's gun reason for that is I'll just show you real quick safety's on obviously no mag in there the lever comes right back in your face if you can see that and the other thing is you've got the adjustment screws back here which are going to be right on your cheek so it's a shame because they do have pretty much an ambidextrous cheek piece if you can see that on there but unfortunately it is going to be a left hand or right hand sorry shooter's gun that said to brighten the mood a bit there's some really good stuff going on with this gun so as you already know you have got the adjustable cheek piece and rubber butt pad what I love about this is it's simply tightening up or loosening these screws and you can set it pretty much any way you want. You don't need any Allen keys, nothing like that. You've not got to deal with little grub screws and then be scared to death you're going to lose them. Literally undo that, move it up and down, back and forth, superb. Obviously you've also got your studs here which can be switched from right to left hand side. It's got the, obviously the little, uh, little slots in there for it to go in. And you've also got a, for a tactical rifle this is a big thing, a four stock which is lovely obviously this is removable the um, accessory rail on the front end here just unscrew that and that will just come straight out and you can set it there's three slots underneath so you can put it exactly how you want it which is good uh, but yes you have a four stock and not only that they've even gone out their way to put a little bit of like stippling in the um the synthetic stock there if you can see that that's i like that that's good but that means you can if you're a walked up style hunter like i was or am i try to be but don't really get time these days you've actually got somewhere really comfortable to put your leading hand you're not putting it on rail like this or a freezing cold which it is today bottle on there so that is a big one up for me and obviously you've got the capability to put a bipod there if you want anyway so we're we're all winning essentially one thing i will say what we forgot to mention in the features section because this is big dan's air gun reviews um you have a power adjuster on this side if you can see that little lever can't really point to it because I'm holding the gun but yeah hopefully you can see it there's that lever there that is fantastic again if you're out hunting you can set the power level I think it goes down to about six foot pound so if you're doing some shooting someone's having a bit of fun you might have just heard a shot go off then if you're doing a bit of shooting inside the barn such like that whack it down you've not got to worry about over penetration or anything like that and the worst thing possible which is it over penetrates ricochets and damages the building you're in which is basically probably going to get rid of that permission you've got and with how hard permissions are to get in the UK you want to avoid that at all costs. This has got you covered with that. One thing that is quite interesting, that was another shot going off. I don't know if they're doing clays around here or what's happening, but fair play to them. It's a beautiful day for it. One thing I will mention is the safety is an interesting one. You might have noticed a second ago when I pulled that side lever back, you didn't hear it cock. The safety not only stops you from cocking the rifle, as you can see there, but obviously 
typically as you'd expect acts as a standard safety which is i think that's quite nice you've got a little bit of extra security on there as well so loading the mag how do you do that well that is really simple slot on the rear of the mag as you can see there and you've got another one in the breech now no doubt i'm going to fluff this as i always do on camera wait it's there somewhere there it goes that wasn't too bad was it i think i'll let myself get away with that close the side lever up and then you're ready to rock and roll so let's put it in our shoulder and see just what we think and obviously we've got the big silencer on there as well so hopefully it should be nice and quiet bloody hell and it is as well don't get me wrong this is a 2.2 not a 177 like we usually review but let's have another little listen to that that cocking action is silky smooth as well if you can see that okay let's give that another go i'm gonna shut up and put you right up to my lapel mic if i can which is a safe direction all you can hear is noise from the action i tell you what i've got an apology to make i think i've just been made to look more of a fool than i usually do rainson yes your silencer is huge you could knock nails in with it but i tell you what that's brilliant genuinely don't get me wrong we've reviewed rifles on this channel that come with silencers like you might have seen the artemis m16 reviews we did where you've got that little silencer that come with it and yes it does mute the muzzle report that's actually though a great silencer on there it's huge hang on let's just i'll tell you what let's take that silencer off let's have a go with it without it on and we'll have a little listen let's just take this off there's a ton of thread on this there we go i suppose you need to if you're holding you need that if you're holding uh, 12 tons on the other end right let's give that another go to be fair i'm saying that it's not that bad it's just the size of it makes you think oh my god let's put one in let's just take that mag out because i think she is oh no there is one in there never mind i'm wrong so I'll give, you get an entire new chance down to ruin the uh the loading there we go right silence is now off have a listen massive massive difference i tell you what yeah i've just had humble pie i was just laughing about that silencer a second ago with what it looked like but that is good you watch in no time you'll be throwing your fire arc silencers away and getting a rainson one trust me that looked lovely on a 99s <laughs> but anyway no that is good handling wise i'm a very very happy chap that has surprised me i thought that was going to be a little bit miserable you know like i say my hands were a bit squished up that sort of thing that is really really nice if you can take my or if you don't take my word for it even but if you can shoulder one even with the silencer on and have a swing around with that that's a conus pro 6 to 24 by 44 on there as well so that's a fairly hefty scope and even so granted the silencer's off now but it's not really a heavy gun anyways that's it for the handling section and we need to figure out is that only so quiet because it's doing about three feet pound let's whack the chronograph out and find out
Okay, so accuracy testing time. We've got the rifle zeroed in roughly, so all groups should at least be on card. We fitted the Kona spy pod on the front end there that you can see, just to give us a little bit more stability. Won't give us a great deal more than we usually have because as you may have seen on our other videos, it's the world's wobbliest table. And to make it worse, if you can see that, it's also the world's iciest table at this moment in time, just to make it a little bit worse, a little bit more salt in the wound. When it comes to pellets, we have got a pretty good smattering with us today, ranging from the expensive gear all the way down to the budget gear, which is what we're looking at here. So, top left, we have the new SMK Spitfire Domes, then Marksman, SMK Victory Heavy Shock, and Milbro Selects. On the left, we've got the more premium gear. So, down below, we've got FX 16 Grain, Crossman Premier 14.3, Norma S Target Match, Rifle Premium Series, Norma Golden Trophy FT Dome, JSB Exact Heavy Diablo, RWS Superfield, and H&N or Remington Thunder Barracuda. So, a pretty good selection, all different weights, sizes, you name it there. So we should get a pretty good idea as to what the Rainson can do. So then, let's get the rifle aimed down range and see what we can do to that card.
So a quick recap, 25 yard test over and done with. How do we get on? Pretty interesting results actually, because we had some budget pellets like the Milbro Selects, which were genuinely, other than one flyer, pretty superb. If we put the five pence piece down there, you can see, despite the way it looks, that is barring the one flyer low and right, that is a five pence cluster in there. FX is let us down a bit. There's, you can see there's a pellet hole just high and left of the bullseye there. Hopefully you can see that. And on the right, we've also got two pellet holes as well. Not ideal, maybe better luck next time with those. We'll try them in a 177 at a later date and see how we do. Norma S target match. Now these are wad cutters and they did do extremely well. There's the five pence next to that. So they're gonna be in our 45 yard test that we do in a second. SMK victory heavy shock, mm, not bad. Not bad, we put the five pence down there. Again, it is a five pence cluster with one little shot. I think it was one just off to the left. This is where things let us down a little bit. The SMK Spitfires, I was hoping these were gonna do better. Sadly, that's not the case. 20 pence group, maybe, if you can see that there. So not perfect, up to 25 yards. You'd probably more or less happily hunt with them, but I wouldn't take them any further than that. Crossman Premiers were very weird in the way that it was just a vertical string. You have a look at that there. 20 pence all day long, still not too terrible. Remington Thunder Barracuda. These disappointed me a little bit because I thought, oh my God, these are brilliant. There is almost, granted, a bit of a vertical spread, but no horizontal movement there whatsoever. We just had one little shot, went low and left. That cluster is superb, and I am going to put them in the 45-yard test just for the sake of it because that's annoying me, and I want to give them another chance because I think they could be pucker. Speaking of pucker, Superfield. Five shots. I don't think any more needs to be said. They're going in the 45 yard test. Norma's let us down a little bit. It's a shame too, because we had three pellets going through pretty much the exact same hole here, very much like the Superfield, but we got unlucky with two shots going off. It could have been me. Maybe I pulled it a bit, could be me. But again, it is a very similar pellet to the Superfield. So we will knock them off and we will keep the Superfields in for 45 yards. Marksman, again, bit of a shame. Three pellets through the same hole here, more or less. One slightly going high but sadly one miles off over there. So a bit of a letdown there. Considering the cost of the pellets though, it's not that terrible. That one might have just been a bit of a dodgy one. You don't know. At a later date, we will try the Marksman's again to give them another chance. The rifle pellets, very, very sluggish pellets these. Didn't do that great. 20 pence cluster with one shot going high, but not anything really worth talking about. And after that, we have, as we all probably predicted, the JSBs. Also pretty damn perfect. So. We're going to mix things up a little bit. We're going to obviously use JSB and Superfield. And for a bit of fun, we're also going to use the Barracuda S target match. And if we have enough light, because it is getting dark very quickly today, we're also going to use the Milbro Selects because why not? Simple as. So now we're going to set the target up at our 40, 45 sorry, yard mark, which is all the way back at that barn over there. I'll be perched behind this now very wet, as you can see, uh, digger bucket which I'm not looking forward to, as you can tell, and we'll see how the rifle gets on. So we're going to see if we can get this one out before Christmas if we can, fingers crossed. Let's see if we, what the rifle can do at 45 yards. Okay, so target is set up at 45 yards. Just pan it across. We've had to put the table out there because the bucket is full of water, it would seem. Um, we had absolute freezing snow when we first started this review. That has since melted, as I'm sure you can see, and it is now absolutely pouring it down with rain. So if I don't finish this review and end up with hypothermia and probably pneumonia on top of that, it'll be an absolute miracle.
final verdict. What do we think of the Rainson Edge X? We've done a pretty damn good test on the gun with multiple different pellets, accuracy testing at most ranges, and I think it's time now we all wrap it up and see exactly what we think of the gun. So, as always, we are pessimists on this channel, so what do we not like about the gun? Uh, first things first, this isn't a thing that I don't like as such. You, immediately you knew I was going to look at it, didn't you? The silencer is huge that it comes with. It's a hefty unit. Don't get me wrong, it's got that feeling it's never, ever, ever going to go wrong. Not the silencers usually do, but... And it does not affect accuracy on the gun either, at least during the testing that I've done here with this one. It is a lovely bit of kit, but it is heavy. So I see most people are probably going to be putting the fire arc silencer on the end anyway. That said, definitely give it a go before you do, because it does bloody work, I'll say that. Some guns, we get the silencers with them, they take the edge off, but that's about it. This genuinely makes it whisper quiet. Other negatives, uh, let's have a think. The one thing I will mention is not a massive negative, but the cocking lever, it does have quite a long stroke on it. You've got to pull it almost all the way back to the cheek piece there before it cocks. Ideally, it wouldn't quite be like that, but it's a case of it is what it is. The cocking mechanism itself and the pellet loading is actually absolutely smooth as silk, however. I will say that, one of the smoothest we've ever had on this channel. But, and again, another thing we will say, I know it's not a left-hand friendly gun, but if you're left-handed, even if you tried to use it, which would be awkward because these little um, dials on here, rotors, would be stabbing you in the face, you would be punching yourself in the eyes every single time you tried to cock it. So, bit of a downside, the fact that it's not very lefty friendly, but at the same time, Unfortunately, I don't mean to say it is what it is, but it is what it is, I'm afraid. Um, other negatives, just trying to have a little think now. The trigger isn't a true two-stage, at least out the box. It's more of a single stage, a bit like the regime we reviewed, where it gets a little heavier when it gets to that second stage before it breaks. So, again, bear that in mind. Granted, however, I will have to say this, we haven't tweaked the trigger at all, simply because we usually shoot the guns out the box as they come, because obviously that's how you're going to get the gun. So we don't really want to fine-tune and fettle something, and then if you decide to pick one up, it's completely different, as that's not really a fair, honest review, in my opinion. It is what it is. But it's definitely not a bad trigger. It's quite nice, in fact, and it didn't affect the accuracy test results on here at all. But... Just bear that in mind. Oh, and the fill probe system is stupid, but we went into that earlier, so I won't really rant and ramble on about that. But please, guys in Turkey, if you're gonna do a built-in fill probe, make sure it's the right size so most people's whips can plug straight on. And if you're gonna put an adapter to go on it, make sure it's a quick fill adapter. Don't make that adapter threaded so you've got the longest fill system on the planet with this. Anyways, moving on. Um, positives now, really. The gun is very well equipped. You have got a sling stud that is convertible from right to left hand side you get three magazines a standard and single shot tray adjustable butt pad adjustable cheek piece again safety but you expect that but this one is quite a clever one the fact that it'll even stop you from accidentally cocking the gun and such if you put the safe the safety on so a good gun for juniors to learn with um, you've also got the regulator pressure gauge and the standard air gauge on there which again be careful don't go tinkering the gun i'm not going to say that if you've obviously you care about warranty because it may be voided by doing so but for the tinkerers out there that really want to squeeze extra little, the tiniest little extra bit of performance out of these, that is a godsend, the fact that you've got that reg pressure right in front of you. It's a very accurate gun as well. When we look at the groups here, 25 yards, things were a bit more ideal as you can see. And then 45 yards, it opened up to about a 20 pence group, but as we mentioned earlier, they were hardly ideal conditions. Again, handling wise of the gun shows off here and the fact that even with the heart pumping and such, we managed to get a 20 pence group with one flyer at 45 yards, all live on camera, like what we did with the regime, so you can see just what the gun can do. In general, it is a bloody well specced gun, it must be said. You've also got the power adjuster on the left hand side that unfortunately you can't see at this moment in time because I've spun the gun around the wrong way. But in general, I am a massive, massive fan of the Rainton Edge X. The other thing I will mention, these guns are imported by ASI. And much like Range Right, what I do really rather like is the fact that the guys have always got spare parts for these. So let's say if you are a tinkerer, again, watch your warranty. If you are a tinkerer, or even in the future something goes wrong with the gun, or you just like spare bits to have for peace of mind, like some people do, I'm willing to bet they will have the part there for you. They are a wonderful company to deal with, which is why I'm more than happy to do the review on this gun. And as with Range Right and such like that, they were more than happy for me to give my honest thoughts on it as well. So massive credit for that as well. In general, it's a fantastic gun. And when you think this is essentially a Mark I for a company that's come over here, they've absolutely hit the ground running. So now comes the question, would I have one or this one? 
And my answer is actually no. I know you're all sat there spitting popcorn out of your mouth like Dan, you was just kissing its ass for about 10 minutes or what have you. How could you say no? And the honest reason for that is because I'd have this one. Rainson also offer the Edge X in a walnut, and that, although still a little tactical, is a pretty, pretty gun, especially for a semi bullpup type rifle, especially with that marine barrel on there. And you do get that on both rifles, admittedly, but that is my cup of tea down there, and you still get the checkered grips and things like that. The only thing that you miss out on is an adjustable butt pad and cheek piece, as you can see there. Apologies for the weird camera angles then. It's a new camera we're using now. I'm still getting, still getting used to it, but yeah, this is the one that I would definitely go for. But, my honest opinion, I think it's a cracking gun. It really, really is. Just maybe you might want to maybe invest in a different silencer. But again, try the one that comes with it. Anyways, we are rambling now. I do hope this rifle gets to you before Christmas. That is the intention. Fingers crossed I'm going to crack on with it as soon as I can. This review, sorry, not rifle, if I just said that then. And all I'll say is thank you ever so much for watching. I wish you all a Merry Christmas. And hopefully we'll see you again in the new year. So look after yourself, everyone. Make sure to get plenty of turkey down you. And we'll see you next time.